I think Africa has very serious food security challenges. And I think um, a lot of the food also in Africa comes from the forest, especially in, if you look at forest countries, a lot of foodstuff products from the forest are consumed as part of the main diets and the main nutrition within these countries. Um, I think that's one main link. I think the second link is that there is an obvious link between agriculture and forestry in terms of agriculture being a leading cause of deforestation on the continent of Africa and globally, I think. So we've got very strong linkages at those two levels. There is a strong food security need. And secondly, Africa agriculture is likely to be very highly affected by climate change. And we need to look at more sustainable ways of managing agriculture in a way that enables us to meet both the food security demands that does not destroy forests and also looks at other environmental services that we require on the continent. I think yes. I think if we go with sustainable intensification pathways, then we might free up a lot of the pressure on forests. Um, one example would be if you take um, productivity in shifting cultivation that is the main driver, one of the main drivers of deforestation in Africa, involves moving from one piece of land to another simply because the fertility of the previous piece of land dwindles and so you have to move on to the other one because they don't use fertilizers and they don't use you know a lot of inputs now if you can intensify agriculture and enable, enable them to use inputs then they'll be able to stay on the same piece of land and they will produce more and so they do not have to clear other pieces of forest to get fresh and fertile soils on which to produce the food that they need. So in that sense, intensification will help theoretically spare forest land and, and, and also increase food production because a lot of the a lot of the, 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 the forest deforestation is linked to to getting new land for for increasing food production. I think there are, there are a couple of ways around it. I think agriculture would be largely the best benefit would come from having agriculture as a strategy for reducing emissions from deforestation. Um, and then there would be two questions, I guess. I mean, the biggest question would be, what is the place of um, agricultural intensification in a red strategy? Um, as a way of reducing, you're reducing, and what should put, how much should RED invest in agricultural intensification as a strategy for reducing deforestation? I think that is the most direct link that we will have. The other question about whether or not we should get direct compensation for soil carbon in agricultural lands is the second part of the question, but that's not fully linked to RED. But it is an important part of the question because farmers are already doing things that are beneficial to, to uh, um, the climate, but are not getting you know, any benefits from that. And also climate change funds can invest in agriculture because for us to have sustainable agriculture, we need huge investments. One source of investment is potentially climate funds for climate smart agriculture and that would be helpful because it will contribute to food security and enhance the core benefits that we can get in terms of poverty alleviation in terms of other environmental services we need funds to 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 help farmers adapt and mitigate climate change and we think strongly that climate change funds should invest in those because it does have wider core benefits for poverty reduction for biodiversity um, that we are unlikely to get if we invested in if we don't invest in, invest in, in, in climate smart agriculture